Um, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Dreaming AI. My name is Nuked, and today we are going to learn how to use video to video with Comfy UI. Uh, I've been searching for a straightforward way to perform video to video with Comfy UI for quite some time now. I found some custom nodes in the WAS suite that I couldn't quite master them, and even the lack of a preview that made the experience less Comfy UI like made me opt for a different solution. So I decided to create some simple custom nodes that allow those who want to delve into this field to focus less on how to decompose and recompose videos and more on the result. Uh, let me start by saying that I'm not very experienced in video to video techniques and I've tried to find the best method to help you achieve a decent result while aiming to inspire you to do even better. The custom nodes I've written can be downloaded along with my suite, link in the description. For those who have the previous version, simply follow the steps to update. So let's launch Comfy UI and immediately look for the first node, Load Video. Uh, this node aims to be the video version of the standard load image with some additional functions that I'll explain now. First of all, to load a video, you can simply drag and drop it onto the node in the top part or use the dedicated button. This way, the video will be loaded into Comfy UI and a preview in a loop will start. It's important to note that it only accepts MP4 videos as input. I made this choice because there was no point in struggling to make the node support more formats when there are applications like File Converter, link in the description, that can convert even GIFs into this format with a simple Windows context menu. And now let's delve into the details of the node. The node consists of the following settings. The field where you can choose between the current video and previously loaded videos, just like load image. And then there's the local URL field, which provides the, the comfy UI URL to access the video. And this field is for visualization purposes only and doesn't actually serve you. Next is the frame rate field, which can be modified to original half and quarter. By changing this field, we can reduce the frame rate to half or a quarter of the original video, obviously uh, reducing processing times, especially if you want a rough preview of the entire video. I'm also convinced that in the future, by reducing the frame rate and then using other AI-based methods to reinterpolate the frames to the original frame rate, you can achieve greater coherence between the different scenes in the video. One of these techniques has been applied in a new node that I'll explain later. The next field is resize by, which can have values none, height, or width. You'll use this field only if you want to resize videos that are too large or too small for you, choosing which dimension to modify, vertical or horizontal. Um, the video's proportions will always be maintained. The size field will tell you what value to apply to the selected dimension in resize by. The last two configurable fields are images limit and batch size. The first one tells Comfy UI how many frames to use for the video. Um, I created this field to allow us to run all tests on a few frames to make the work faster. Once you're satisfied with the results, you can finally render the entire video by setting the field to zero. The second and final field identifies how many batches the rendering work will be divided into within Comfy UI. As much VRAM as your graphics card may have, even a 30 second video with decent dimensions is impossible to work with without setting a batch because of the VRAM required. I suggest starting with batches of 15, 20 units to figure out which value works best for you. Now let's talk about the outputs of this node, images. This is the most important output as it contains our video divided into frames. Empty latent, I included this as a replacement for a latent empty image because I didn't want to manually set the height, width, and batch size every time. Uh, this output already contains all the correct settings. Metadata, this contains data to provide to the video saver node to make it work correctly. 
width and height. These are, as you might guess, the width and height of the final video in case you want to input them into other nodes that require these parameters. Uh, the second node I've created is the output node, which I've named save video. It's equivalent to save image and is responsible for uh, combining all the frames coming from the sampler or any source that returns a list of images and merging them while maintaining the frame rate chosen in load video. There are three available options. Save video. This allows you to save the video in the comfy UI folder. Output and sweep videos. Save frame. This saves all the frames of the video in PNG format in the same folder as the video. Lastly, there is the compression level option, which lets you choose the quality of the PNG frames and consequently the video quality. Higher compression means lower image quality. Next, I've created a node called load frames from folder, which given a path to a folder full of sequentially numbered frame images, creates the image flow needed for video saver to recreate the video. There's a node in the WAS suite that seems to do the same thing, but since I couldn't get it to work, I recreated this one. The final node in this series is the frame interpolator, which, as I mentioned earlier, can help create video frames using AI. Um, for example, if you have a video running at 10 frames per second and set a multiplier to 3, the output video, thanks to AI magic, and a technique called rifle, will reach 30 frames per second. Uh, this node takes a batch of images and metadata as input, which are used to calculate the output. In the output, we have practically the same fields, but modified based on the processing caused by the multiplier. All right, um, now that I've introduced you to these new nodes, as promised, let's create a workflow that uses them. I decided to develop one of the most basic techniques for a simple video-to-video -video transformation together with you. As I mentioned before, my aim is to inspire you rather than do something very complex and perfect as I'm not capable of it, not having been very involved in this practice so far. But with these nodes, I can finally start practicing. Um, first, I downloaded this GIF from the internet, so let's convert it to MP4 and upload it. Since it's a GIF converted to MP4, it has very few frames, and it's also small in terms of resolution, so I'll keep the original frame rate and won't use batches. For the resize, I want the width to be set to 512 pixels, which is the resolution where most stable diffusion models work well. To speed up testing, I'll set the images limit to 2. Let's also select the model that will perform in painting. Um, some models do it better than others, and since we'll be doing you know, in painting on, on dozens, if not hundreds of images, it's better to choose the right one. Um, I'll use Revy Animated, which you can find on Civid AI. For this model, it's recommended to use an external DAE. Let's load the two props and combine them as usual. For the body position, I want to use control net. I'll explain the details of control net in another video, so if you're not familiar with it, know that it's an incredible tool that allows us to take control of what will be generated using submodels. In this example, I'll use the Kaney model, which you can download from Hugging Hub along with its YAML file. Placing it in the ComfyUI slash models slash control net folder will make it detectable by ComfyUI. I'll leave the link in the description. Now let's load the control net model with the load control net model node. Next, let's pass the resulting images from our video loader through a dedicated preprocessor uh, for our control net model called Kenny Edge Preprocessor, taken from Comfy Wise Control Net Auxiliary Preprocessors. I'll load the final node of the control net network called the Apply Control Net Advanced. 
This node takes as input the Kenny model, the images coming out of the preprocessor, and the two props that will be used as output for applying the control net result. Now that we've got this far, let's also load our KSampler advanced, as I want to select the steps from which it should start applying the in-painting. We'll connect the model chosen at the beginning, our VA encoder, um, into which we will input the VAE and the images coming from the load video, and our two prompts coming from ControlNet. Great, now at the KSAMPAR output, we'll connect the VAE decode to which we'll attach the same VAE as before. In the output, we'll connect the frame interpolator, which will take the metadata from load video. And finally, let's connect the save video and the frame interpolator to each other. Excellent, our structure is ready. Now all that's left is to set the parameters that have resulted from the countless tests I conducted while preparing this video. Uh, in the canny edge, let's set the parameters needed for it to detect the image correctly. Let's also add a preview so you can see the result. In Apply Control Net, we'll set the parameters that determine how much impact the modification will have on the final image. The same goes for case sampler. where we'll also use a feature that CompUI Custom Scripts adds, which is the ability to select the steps and denoise value in this way. Perfect, everything is ready for our video-to-video -video transformation. Let's start the operation in wait. As expected, we have only two frames as requested, and as you can see, ControlNet has done its job very well in detecting the drawing inside our image. Um, I could have used the open post model as well, but for this example, Kenny works just fine. The two images seem quite consistent with each other. As I mentioned before, um, I'm not aiming for perfection. Okay, now let's render the entire video by setting images limit to zero. Here's the complete result. I think it's not bad considering how simple the technique we just used is. Of course, there will be specific parameters and a lot of experimentation for each video. But I hope this doesn't discourage you. And that's all for today. I hope you like the nodes I've created and that they inspire you to create incredible creations. Please consider liking and subscribing if you found this tutorial useful. Also, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out as much as I can. And as always, keep, keep dreaming. dreaming.